ঠিক এই মুহূর্তে আমি গ্রিন ডেলথ ইন্স্যুরেন্সের কর্পোরেট হাউসে রয়েছি আমি কায়নাথ আসসালামু আলাইকুম জানাচ্ছি সবাইকে এই অক্টোবর মাসটা হচ্ছে ব্রেস্ট ক্যান্সার অ্যাওয়ারনেস মান্থ আর এই উপলক্ষে কিন্তু মালয়েশিয়ার বিকন হসপিটাল থেকে আমাদের সাথে একজন ডক্টর রয়েছেন তিনি হচ্ছেন ডক্টর ইব্রাহিম ডক্টর ইব্রাহিম ওয়েলকাম টু বাংলাদেশ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ আই এম ভেরি প্লিজ টু বি হিয়ার হাউ আর ইউ ভেরি গুড ভেরি গুড So I know this is your first time in Bangladesh. So how is your experience so far? Very nice. It's my first time here and I think people here are wonderful. Everybody's so friendly. The food here is just simply great. You know, can't stop eating. <laughs> and um and I must, you know, Malaysians love shopping. Yes. And we didn't realize this is such a great place to go shopping. So I'm going to tell all the Malaysians to come here and come here and do all the shopping because you know they 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 love shopping so this is this is a good place for for Malaysians to come in 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 big bags to do all their shopping here because the prices here are very reasonable and very good and got very good good quality materials here wow thank you thank, thank you so you. much so what uh, this is uh, breast cancer awareness month so my first question towards you uh, what are the symptoms of breast cancer okay breast cancer um generally is what we call uh, when they present it usually asymptomatic um usually uh, it's a uh, they can't feel it uh, but sometimes most of the patients present with a lump in their breast and it's not very painful sometimes they accidentally find it sometimes they um, you know just they feel a little bit of discomfort and then they feel the breast and then they, they you know they can feel a lump but most of the time in early stage breast cancer it is uh, there's not much symptoms that's why sometimes we advocate screening and things like that to so that we can detect them even before they start to form cancer but once they have formed cancer they are in later stages then they can have uh, numerous symptoms like pain in the breast discharge uh, discomfort or sometimes they present with ulceration you know and and they can smell or when they present with a uh, metastatic or cancer that spread to the bones they can have pain and 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 discomfort there is any size change in the breast um uh, generally when as the breast as, as the lump gets bigger uh, you will be able to see some distortion in the breast there will be unequal in size of the left breast and the the the, 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 the right breast uh, there might be what we call dimpling in the skin the skin might just get pulled in so when you start raising your hands up you realize that the the breast part of the skin just gets stuck in and sometimes in a very advanced stages you get a appearance on the breast called body orange or orange peel appearance you know like a the the appearance of an orange you get little uh, uh, dimpling in the oranges so you can get that on the nipple on 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 the breast sorry uh, and you get this this body orange uh, appearance or orange peel appearance on the skin that denotes that cancer is very advanced so all lumps are not uh, symptoms of breast cancer all all lumps uh, well um uh, breast cancer all not all lumps are cancerous some lump may just be a benign uh, uh for what we call fibroadenoma generally you see that in younger patients younger women uh they they present with a um lumps in the breast and it's very lumpy some people have a lumpy breast and the difference is that these are very mobile uh, they are painless of course and sometimes they do have some discomfort uh but they are not hard they are just uh, uh they and they they are mobile but when they turn when they are cancerous then the cancerous lump is generally much harder and much more uh and sometimes can cause some degree of discomfort uh and the appearance uh, do change yeah so what are the reasons of breast cancer actually we don't actually know a cause there's no like direct cause relationship but we know that there are certain factors that increases the risk of breast cancer uh sometimes uh, uh you know having a child uh, later in life um, early men- uh, early uh, menarche uh, when they start period very early or when they have late me- uh, when the menopause is very late uh they uh, they don't breastfeed as much um 
and they have more sort of westernization of lifestyle and and of course uh, you know diet you know unhealthy diet fatty diet uh, lack of exercise etc will increase the risk yeah but it's it's not that you eat fat and then you become and you have cancer no it's not like that it just increases the risk so there are numerous factors that increases the risk but there's no one actual cause of it there have been some controversy about hormone replacement therapy because patients were menopausal and they take these pills to contra uh, not only contraceptive but pills to uh, uh, pre to cut down the 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 side effects of of menopause, and sometimes uh, you know that can increase the risk of breast cancer, but that's still very controversial. So some people say no, it doesn't cause, and some people say yes, it may increase the risk. So still, you know, a lot of uh, discussion going on. That means people used to say that uh, consumption of alcohol and smoke, smoking is the cause of uh, breast cancer. It's actually not true. Right. I mean, smoking and alcohol causes a lot of cancers, but there is very little evidence linking that to uh, uh, breast cancer. I think it's more of general lifestyle changes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, for our general Oh man, how could we screening at our home? Okay, um, there are two types of uh, screening. Generally, of course, the one is the hospital where you go and have your mammogram and ultrasound screening. Uh, but sometimes we don't have access to some of these machines. And home, generally, we advocate what we call breast self-examination. Yeah, BSE, breast self-examination. Uh, uh, sometimes there are leaflets and information, or you can download it on the internet. How to examine the breast by looking at the mirror and by how you palpate the breast, and you can feel for lumps and bumps. And you, if you feel for any lumps and bumps in the breast or in your armpit, you should uh, see a doctor and and seek medical advice. For consultation. For consultation. Younger people or children, can they have breast cancer risk? Younger patients, uh, children, uh, they're quite rare. The bulk of breast cancer occurs at the age of 40 to 60 years old. Uh, in our Asian population, the bulk of it occurs in 40 to 60. In the Western population like US and, Amer uh, and Europe, they generally occur above the age of 60, uh, 60, 70 years old, uh, the risk increases. But in, in Asian population, generally is uh, 40 to 60. Below the age of 40, the risk is about 17, 18%, 19%. Below the age of 20, you're talking about less than one, less than 1%. One I hardly see any patients uh, below the age of uh, 20 getting uh, breast cancer. But in the mid-20s, yes, you do see a few, but generally they are, they are, they are quite low. And of course, we worry when very young patients get breast cancer, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive. So what about the men actually? Can they have breast cancer? Yes, they can. They are at risk as well. But the incidence is very, very low. I've got thousands of women with breast cancer, but I only have two patients in my, uh, in my uh, no, in my care now uh, with uh, male breast cancer. Generally, we see about 1 or 2%. Not cancer. that much. Not that, no, no, we don't see that many yet. So, what are the treatments of breast cancer? Okay, breast cancer treatment involves many disciplines and many types of treatment. Uh, the main treatment of scoffs, uh, of course, uh, uh, surgery. Surgery, we divide them into two types. One is a mastectomy, where they have to remove the breast entirely uh, and also removing the glands under the armpit. The second one is lumpectomy, where they only remove the lump and not the whole entire breast and also removing some of the glands under the armpit. So generally patients with advanced or bigger cancers, we, they have to undergo mastectomy. Patients with smaller or early stages uh, with very small uh, lumps, uh, we can get away with what we call lumpectomy. So the first stage is usually surgery. Then what comes after surgery uh, really depends on the risk factors. So when they have very high risk factors, we, we t tend to recommend chemotherapy as well. So patients with, with uh, say, very um, a, a lot of lymph nodes or aggressive cancer, they will need chemotherapy, generally between f uh, four to eight cycles of chemotherapy, given every two to three weeks. Uh, and then um, 
uh, after chemotherapy, uh, we can put them, they may need to have radiotherapy, especially those who've had uh, breast conservative treatment, we will give them uh, radiation treatment. And if they are hormone positive, we also um, uh, start them on hormonal therapy. And once we start them on hormonal therapy, generally we give them for about 10 years. The previous recommendation was five years, but now we are giving hormonal therapy for up to 10 years, uh, and sometimes even more. Uh, if, there's a condition, uh, if they have something called HER2 positive, then there is also a drug called Herceptin, which we give for one year. So operate breast cancer is not the only one way, right? Only one treatment. There are also other treatments. Correct. Like I said, you know, there, there's also, uh, they need not only one treatment, sometimes you need a combination of treatments. So sometimes you have surgery and then uh, after surgery you need to have chemo and then you need to have hormonal treatment and Herceptin treatment and radiotherapy. But some patients with very early stage and very low risk, they just need surgery um, plus or minus radiotherapy and hormonal therapy. So, you know, it really much depends on what we call the pathological evaluation. That means after the surgery, you look at the, 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 the cancer specimen and you study the pathology of it and you do some what we call markers and then based on that we will make the decision uh, about treatment. So cancer, just a simple word, but I'm sure it's not just a simple thing. Uh, so what is can cancer actually? Yeah. Cancer is when normal cells in your body start to misbehave and go wrong. So they are cells that originate from your own body, from your own tissue. And what happens is some th uh, there are some genetic changes, mutations, we call them mutations, that suddenly makes these cells don't respond to the normal signal. Because when cells grow, there is a start and stop signal. But what happens in the cancer cells is these control processes break down and they grow, these cells grow uncontrollably. Uh, they grow aggressively. They invade into other tissue. They get into the blood vessels and they spread to other parts of the body. So the, what makes the cancer different is this uh, uncontrolled growth and the ability to spread and, and, and form colonies of cancer cells in other tissues. So, you know, that's the difference between cancer and a non-cancer growth. Okay, so chemotherapy tries to control those uh, cells. Well, chemotherapy is one of the ways that we can treat uh, uh, cells that spread, but there are also other modalities. So there are now newer treatments like what we call targeted therapies and also immunotherapy. So targeted therapies is different. Chemotherapy, what you do is you inject the the drugs uh, into the circulation, into, into the blood vessel. You like you put a drip and you infuse the drug in and it seeks out and kills the cancer cells. Whereas targeted the therapy is how they, they treat the cancer cells is they regulate the mechanism where cells grow. So they, it's like a, a internal manipulation of those cancer cells blocking the cells and trying to stop the cancer cells from growing from, from, from the internal uh, mechanism eh, that makes it grow. Uh, immunotherapy, on the other hand, is, works uh, slightly differently because what happens is when these cells, the cancer cells grow in the body, our immune system doesn't recognize it as a foreign cell, doesn't recognize it as a dangerous cell. It thinks that these cells are, are friendly because these cancer cells emit a signal that hides them from the immune system, so the immune system doesn't attack them. So the immunotherapy, what it does is, it blocks the signal that the cancer cells emit, telling our immune cells, hey, don't touch me. So they block that signal, and so then the cancer cells um, will, will be able to be recognized by our own immune system, and our own immune system will then start attacking 
the cancer cells. So, you know, that's the theory behind it. Because if our if we can alert our own immune system, then it's a much better way of controlling cancer because hopefully it's a more sustainable long-term uh, uh, solution. Yeah. So the, the you know because these cancer cells they hide, they tell, they numb the immune system, they tell the immune system, hey, don't don't uh, yeah you know they, they uh, don't don't attack me. Yeah, so if we can unmask that, then I think we have a, a way of controlling the cell using our own immunity. That's the whole idea now. Because of chemotherapy, people lose their hair. So what about other treatments? Uh, right, a lot of the impression is chemotherapy makes you lose your hair. But not all chemotherapy does that. Some of the newer drugs actually have very little side effects, very little complications, and they don't even lose their hair. I've had um, uh, patients, uh, you know, they, they walk in and they, are, they they don't even, even lose a single strand of hair. So, you know, uh, and they have uh, very low complications. Uh, targeted therapy and immunotherapy, on the other hand, yes, they don't attack uh, uh, yeah. growing hair. Yeah. So we heard about cyber knife. Beacon Hospital has cyber knife. So what it is? One of the important treatment uh, in cancer is the use of radiation. But sometimes the use of radiation can be very damaging because if you don't control the radiation or the dose or the rays, yeah, and it goes and spills and uh, treats the good cells, you will damage the good cells. The idea of radiation is you want it to only treat the cancer cells and try to avoid treating the good cells. Yeah? But some of these good cells may be just next to the cancer cells. Okay. Say for example, the, you know, the good lung tissue or the yeah. spinal cord might be sitting next door to each other. Right. Right. Right? So CyberKnife uses a very precise technology it focuses the beam of radiation, very fine beam of radiation, to just exactly where the spot is. So just imagine in your school days, your know, science experiment, when you were playing with the uh, magnifying glass, yes. um, and you use a magnifying glass to burn a piece of paper you, you know, using right. the sun ray. So you can only focus the sun ray at one point, point. the paper burns. If you move it too far or too near, nothing happens to the paper. CyberKnife technology is well, similar to that principle where you focus the beam of radiation straight to the point, your focal point, which is your tumour and gives, delivers a, such a high dose of radiation, it just damages the tumour but nothing happens to the uh, cells around it. You know, so it's, it's, it's a very, very uh, high-tech way of attacking cancer cells, very precise and has very low complication rates. Okay. So what is the success rate of the cyber knife? Well, okay, we've been treating cyber knife uh, mainly uh, into two regions. I would divide it into two regions. One is what we call like, the, the, the CNS or the brain. Yeah. The, the other part is the rest of the body. Uh, a lot of our experiences come from the brain. Um, uh, treating benign tumors uh, uh, like meningiomas, uh, acoustic neuromas, uh, uh, AVM, which is uh, abnormality of the blood vessels, uh, or even treating um, uh, brain uh, malignant brain tumors. Uh, the second part is also treating the body, like uh, lung cancer, prostate cancer, spinal cancers, uh, pancreatic cancers, liver cancers. Generally, what we find is, um, you know, we, we do get very, very good results treating some of these benign uh, tumours in the brain where we have a very good control rate of well over 80%. Uh, treating some, our, we've been doing prostate cancer and we had wonderful results treating prostate cancer because we can give such a high dose of radiation over five days. Yeah? So instead of them having surgery, and having all the discomfort of surgery and, and can't control the urine and, and they have uh, uh, they become impotent because of surgical treatment. Uh, CyberKnife treatment is just five days outpatient, um, one hour treatment per day. They walk in, they walk out, 
with very very little of or no complications they don't even have problems with erectile dysfunction some of these patients and you know our control rate has been almost a hundred percent for five years so we've got very very impressive results and that's our experience some of the centers in America where they've treated you know uh, thousands of patients they are reporting more than 95 percent more than 95 percent um, success rate uh, using cyber knife treatment so it's you know it's it's a very very exciting and a very very um, uh, you know innovative way of treating uh, prostate cancer and it's proven to be uh, very very effective and I think this is going to be what I would call the game changer it's going to change the way how we manage uh, prostate cancer in the near future when more people know about this and those you know and those who have had treatment they, they really have benefited from from technology like just cyber knife which uses what we call SBRT stereotactic body radiation okay. now it comes to what were the cost of cyber knife treatment okay. now cyber knife of course technology comes with a price um, the machine is not cheap it costs anything from six to eight million dollars to invest in a cyber knife machine uh, but the, the the treatment cost we try to keep it low at Beacon Hospital we charge maybe around ten thousand um, dollars but we look at how you know we do have funds that can help patients if they cannot afford to pay treatment and we try to meet um, the patients um, affordability criteria um, um, but certainly um, you know in Malaysia in our center I think in terms of cost we are very very competitive compared to many other places uh, around the area or in, uh, in neighboring neighboring countries and or if you look at America it'll cost about a hundred thousand US dollars to, to, to have a treatment like this so certainly we are very very competitive so tell us more about Beacon Hospital. Okay, Beacon Hospital um, uh, started in uh, 2005 and mainly as a focusing on cancer treatment. Uh, we have invested very, very heavily on cutting edge technology in terms of radiation uh, and chemotherapy, diagnostic uh, equipment and focusing mainly on cancer. Uh, of course now we do have other subspecialty. Uh, Beacon Hospital is in just the out outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. Uh, it's in Pataling Jaya. Uh, we are a, what we would like to call a boutique hospital. We're not a huge center but we focus uh, on, on cancer treatment and I'm very pleased to say that we recently uh, was given the ASMO award or the European Society of Medical Oncology uh, award as an integrated cancer hospital uh, and palliative care center and we are the and during this uh, uh, this year uh, we were the only hospital in Southeast Asia that received this award uh, so it's a it's a big uh, yeah thank you very much big feather on our ca uh, cap and and Besides that, we also pride on, on the quality of treatment. We also have certification from, from MD Anderson, which is one of the top cancer centers in America, to show that the quality of our radiation treatment is similar to their standard in America. So we pride on, on, on technology and we pride on quality of patient, uh, cancer treatment in our center. Okay, nice. So my last question is about people um, always ask us why Malaysia. So, what do you what will be your answer? Okay, uh, in Malaysia we have been very very quiet in the past. We've been just focusing on uh, internal markets. So, but now you know we are we we've realized that uh, we've got very good quality hospitals. Uh, we are very competitive. We have very, very good doctors. A lot of the specialists in Malaysia and certainly in Beacon Hospital, a lot of our specialists are all UK trained and we have very good uh, facilities. Uh, and for patients who are coming from abroad, uh, we, we offer very competitive prices. You know, uh, uh, you know what you pay in, in Ringgit is a lot less than you know in other countries and neighboring countries so it is um, 
uh, cost, cost very cost effective uh, uh, treatment we offer um, access is very easy and for patients say from uh, Bangladesh where you know there are many Muslim country we, we are a Muslim country uh, a lot of things are halal there's easy access to mosque and all the you know, foods for are food, halal. foods are halal and the hotel is uh, very reasonable uh, the price are very competitive uh, easy access and you know and Malaysia is very friendly to patient yes, people better, from, yes, from, yes. from 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 <laughs> Bangladesh as well you know so so it would be a, a good alternative to consider Malaysia as as the the, the medical hub for for patients to have, from here to go there for treatment and also halal environment we certainly it's how halal food but but you know but you, of course you have to check the restaurants uh, there are some uh, non halal restaurants but generally you, you know Maxi most Lamar, of the most most of the restaurants there yeah uh, Hello, and the food is nice as well. Yes. <laughs> so thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much for giving us time. Thank you so much uh, come here in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here and hope to come back again in future. I'd really love to visit this place and really love to come back here again. Do you want to say something to our viewers? Uh, yes. Um, you know we. You know, uh, Beacon Hospital, like I say, we, we pride in, in, in treatment. Uh, we, we are very, very um, focused on, on, on uh, cancer. And we are here to help you for any patients who require uh, 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 assistance, treatment, or even consultation. Uh, we are here to help you. Okay, thank you so much. So, Achkir Moto, Dr. Ibrahim Shata Mekhane Bidai Nichi, Ebung Apni Judi Malaysia Te Jete Chan, Beacon Hospital Jete Chan, Tahole GDS is Tache Apna Shate, Kichi Gutamana Shudumatram the Shate Jugajo Kutahabe, zero one six one seven triple six triple eight. Abarabulchi, zero one six one seven triple six triple eight. A number of phone din, Apnar Medical Visa Take Shurukore, appointment, air ticket, Apna Joto Dhorne Shaju. দরকার হয় এমন কি আপনাদের যদি অ্যাপয়েন্টমেন্টেরও দরকার হয় যে কোনো হসপিটালে আমরা তো আছি আপনার সাথে थैंक यू सो मच আমাদের সাথে এতক্ষণ থাকার জন্য আপনারা ভালো থাকবেন আপনাদের সকল ধরনের সুস্থতা কামনা করছি